Hello, uh, this is uh, David Pratt, uh, Vice President of Lee Fisher. We're here today at GAD World 2018, and I'm here today to talk to Steve Morris, uh, Global Vice President of Aviation with Jacobs, uh, about the conference. So, Steve, um, it's been a great conference so far. Uh, Absolutely. From, from your point of view, what is the most interesting thing you, you've heard at the conference? I think it's been technology. It's been really interesting. We know technology is going to influence what we're going to be doing. It already has. <laughs> Some of the interesting facts came out when Financial Times when we were talking about that 90% of data has been collected in the last two years, and 10% is everything before that. It's amazing how fast we're doing with data. And what are we using with that data? So the technology of it. And I think part of the presentation by PSP was saying everything they do has to be driven by technology. And I think in the development world, what you're doing in planning, and Lee Fisher and what Jacobs is doing as well, we absolutely have to incorporate technology. So it's really in the financial side, the development side, the operation side, the customer experience side, it's been amazing how much technology has influenced. It's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. The people that are here and hearing from the CEOs, from airports, from the private development side to the operators, they're listening to that as well and they're buying into that, which is just really amazing that we're at this point. For sure, and, and as the FT lady said, it's like a hockey stick, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's incredible. And what's tomorrow? Yeah. What are we going to do with all that data? Mm. And how are we going to use it? And yeah. That's the remarkable thing. Well, I guess for me, one of the takeaways related to that, I think, is the emphasis now on, on customers and, and, the, and the passenger experience. Have you heard that as well? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what we're doing with data, what we're being able to achieve from being data collection, but also through security, operation, safety, and just in the, in the sense of what airlines need to do, what they really bring to the passengers, and also to the financial side, the development side. How can we utilize that to do more investment, capital investment, that brings more return, which really is driven by what technology is going to be in our smartphone. I mean, that's where we are today, mm. and it's going to be even more broadly utilized in the future. Very exciting. Oh, it, it, yeah. it, we're passionate about it. I mean, yeah. I know you are, and I know we, we see this all over the world, and it's just finally coming to fruition that's happening. I mean, it's, uh, we're, we're a little bit older in our, in our, in our uh, careers, but we're excited about it, and the, and the younger millennials and the Gen Zs are really coming out with great ideas. I, I guess with all that, though, is there anything that concerns you with all these new things that are happening in the well, space? As you know, David, and how much that you've been really involved in part of the development, what needs to be done is resources. Um, maybe technology can help utilize and maximize um, the efficiency of what resources we have. We just don't have the people. If mm. you see how much needs to be developed in the world, we think it's almost a trillion US dollars has to be built in the near future. We understand that the need is there. We know the growth continues in the world within from you know 4% general to um, some areas of the world at 7%. How are we going to be able to do this? The manpower, the technology, just being able to find the development and the finance. Is, is the capital market going to be able to keep up with it and be able to get into it? And we're going to do it efficiently and mm. be in time right. and have that opportunity to present a great pasture experience to the pastors. I mean, you see that in what you're doing mm -hmm. as well in Latin America and the Caribbean. It's really intrinsic of everything that you're doing in the planning uh, for, for your clients. Yeah, it's true. The, the market is growing so quickly that, you know, the, the challenge is for us all to keep up, really. Yeah, that's true. It's just amazing. The next thing, I guess, is, you know, we talk about the growth. Uh, where do you see these growth opportunities happening globally? Well, as we, ACI and IATA and others have really continued to push that 4 to 5 percent is, is a growth. And we, that's been really brought up by whether it's China, Asia, India, and really Latin America. As, as you know, the middle class is really growing in some of these regions. But in some regions, they're seven and eight, nine percent, and that's totally in, in, impossible. Some of the, these airports are doubling and tripling in a matter of ten years, amount of million annual passengers that go through. I, I just think this growth and the trend we're going with technology, the new aircraft coming out, the efficiencies, the airlines are profitable, the airports, especially on the private side, are making money. And so I think redevelopment, read of, of uh, assets that have been in, whether in Europe or in the United States or in other areas of the world that really need the capacity. I mean, as you see in Latin America, mm. you, you pointed out before, those airports are in the center of town. Yeah. They can't grow. Where do they go? No, it's true. In, in Latin America, we're seeing a lot of greenfield developments for that reason. And, and another big driver is the, the growth of the, the middle class, you know, in places like Brazil, 
uh, and uh, Ecuador and Jamaica, where there really is a growing middle class. And, and as people get money, they, they want to travel. And, and we're really seeing that manifesting itself uh, in the last few years and fully expect that to continue to grow. And load factors are up. I mm. mean, we just had EasyJet talk about this week, 90% year-round load factors. That, Nin that's incredible. 92. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just amazing, mm. that 92% of their load factor and they're being able to fill up the planes. I guess one thing we've seen that it's indicative of that as well is uh, just GAD itself. Like you, You've seen how it's changed over the last couple of years. You know, usually it was just GAD world, but what else are they doing that you've seen? Well, what GAD is being able to facilitate and enable the world of development, what we do at Jacobs Lee Fisher and what other um, opportunities for the developers, operators, and finance is bring that, bring people together. And I think uh, this venue this year is one of the best. We've got how many people, just record breaking every year, how many people attend. The high level of airports and developers are incredible. And ability that they've been able to span out and bring GAD Asia, which is an incredible growth market, and bring that as, as somebody particular, GAD Americas. But always GAD World being here in Europe is always special. Mm -hmm. And as much as we've been coming through all the years, it's just really a great way to come into Europe and see really what's happening in the global um, platform and the stage in the world. But I think GAD has been so instrumental in really bringing all of us together. Mm. And we always love to see each other. We're a very incestuous group in aviation. We love to socialize. And GAD just really brings that platform for us to be able to do that. And I guess maybe uh, with that, you know, the GAD Americas first time last year is kind of indicative, I think, of what's happening in the States. Could you maybe just expand a bit on what you see happening in the U.S. market? Well, as we know now, I mean, as uh, public-private partnerships are starting to take on, some of the initial privatization like in Puerto Rico, uh, some of the airports like St. Louis that are potentially on there, now that the U.S. government has allowed unlimited airports to be on the privatization concession, I think it's a watershed moment. We see almost 200 billion U.S. dollars in revenue potential facilities being built like terminals, piers, or concourses. It's an incredible market that has just been so left behind and in, in the last few decades, and it needs to catch up. There's airports that are really driving it, that are building ahead, like Denver and Los Angeles and LaGuardia. They're really in inspired through the P3 method, uh, delivery method, and making getting ahead of the game. But there's so many airports that need so much help. It's part of that resource demand that mm. where is all these resources going to come to be able to support the growth? Not only in the U.S., but what Canada is doing, Latin America, and I think the Americas itself Americas is a great in general. market. Right. Yeah. What do you see happening in the next year if you take out your crystal ball? You know, every time we try to predict, there's always something that comes out, but I think continued growth. I think in the markets, we see that recession is, is under control. We know there's always issue with Brexit. We'll see what happens with that. We know the U.S. is, is, is on fire in, in the economy. So it's continued to grow. Plane orders are still continued, so we still have people to put in seats on the planes. I just think it's technology is going to be how do we embrace technology? And that's what really, really inspires me and I know you as well. How do we really em embrace that? How do we engulf that, that massive growth that's going to happen? That how do we be able to do it? There's wonderful opportunities like Istanbul, New Istanbul Airport IGA just opened. We need more really great opportunities for airports to really move forward like that. Okay. Well, uh, earlier we talked about um, what uh, it was the most interesting thing, but in terms of takeaways, what do you think is, are the main takeaways from this conference? I think every year it's always the personal um, touch. I mean, we get together, we meet, we socialize, we have really high level intellectual discussions, and I think we go away with some actions. Mm. And I think from here the actions will lead on to what really we facilitate the growth, what do we facilitate technology, I, I think, you know, as in the future, you talk about a year from now, are we back here? I think we're going to see more technology. Mm. I think we're going to have more demonstration of what really technology is going to the matter, not only on the airports, but access to their egress, ingress to airports, the automation, autonomous vehicles. How is that going to affect what we do? It's mm. going to really drive what's happening in the world of airports. So I think in a year, we're just going to be bigger. I think we're going to have more people involved in it. I think the technology-driven will have more probably younger people here that are really mm. tech-savvy. 
But we see airports and operators and developers embracing that in their labs, their research and development. I think that's going to come to fruition and bring forward to airports. I mean, you see it as well, well for sure. which is happening in the inefficiencies and good return on investment, which is really at the bottom of the line. Bottom line is we've got to return on these investments. And if you use technology and be able to utilize the data, that 90% mm -hmm. that's been in the last two years, and really bring that to the forefront of how we can really return on great investment to be able to have more CapEx, to be able to develop more airports, expand, and really provide a great great experience to our customers, the passengers. That's right, provide that seamless passenger experience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, well, smartphone travel. There I you mean, go. Biometrics, it's, mm. it's here. Airports it's here. are already doing it. Very good. Okay, well, well, thank you, Steve. That was a very interesting conversation. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it and enjoy what we've experienced here in GAD over many years and working with you around the world. So, Well done.